So your stress level, you, you're you're playing the game, keeping your stress level low, because yeah. like you, yeah, you're doing what you want, kind of, but you're very flexible. Do you have kids? Are we on the podcast yet? Should we be talking about this on the podcast or no? I have well now I have five kids because my wife had three, I have two. Um, but my kids would basically say, "Where are you Airbnb this week?" They would see what stores are around and they would decide if to visit me or not. <laughs> so <laughs> it was great. And then yeah. they would come over. I would be busy. They'd go to the stores or whatever was around and where if I would hang out with them and we'd check different restaurants out. We were all exploring a new area together. Yeah. And yeah. I lived in like every area of New York City. I lived in California, Florida, all Austin, all over the place. So they're ex- they're enjoying it too. For they're seeing the positive. Yeah. And as well, your kids, yeah. your kids would, and you always saw your kids. Like yeah, you never I went saw months them. without seeing them or anything. No, no. They I had them every every other weekend. I had them, or I would visit them where they lived. And um, uh, now though we we rent, so that everybody's got rooms. Um, so your children live with you now? Uh, well, no. Now they're so I've uh, I have two seventeen year olds, a nineteen year old, and two twenty year olds. So the twenty year olds are in and out. Even oh, the seventeen year olds are in and out. 19 year old is permanently here and so it's just like this is like at any point we don't know how many of the five kids will be here right. so when you were when your kids were young young like two three four what were you were you in one place were they, when they were yeah, babies yeah yeah right. then i was in one place uh but they didn't they didn't care it's not like right. this is home like they didn't they don't like i don't think they ever care like what's our home what's our roots like nobody gives a right. shit until right. unless their parents tell them this is this yeah, is it. Right, like, right, you can yeah. always come back here. Right. So yeah, everything's like marketing. It's like a scam. Yeah, I know. So, That's how I feel. It's all conditioned thinking. I'm starting to realize that more and more how much it pays to kind of be a little bit full of shit because everyone else is full of shit. Yeah. Well. Well. <laughs> but but or or if you're not if if you're the one yeah, yeah right so everybody's full of shit and if you're not full of shit they hate you right, like right. I've gotten. I've gotten death threats by going on Yahoo Finance and telling people you shouldn't buy a home because if someone bought a home, that's the biggest financial decision they'll ever make. You can't tell them they're wrong. Right. So, right. or else they'll they'll send you a death threat. I get it all the time. Right. Or how much do you use your your American University degree? Zero. How much do you use your doctorate? Zero. <laughs> right. So how much did, did I? And I I'm still you, paying. I'm still in debt for it. Yes, yeah, one point six trillion dollars in debt yeah. in this world and yeah. uh and for student loan debt and i got a physical ther- i got a doctor in physical therapy for my mother i yeah. did that 100 percent to please my mom yeah and it's like because my my dad you know never had an education so my mom overcorrected she was like you're gonna go all the way i'm not gonna you're not gonna stop until you get a freaking graduate degree so i did it and then l- i did it for two years loved it but i did it for two years and now it's like i've been doing comedy full-time for six years but i'm every month i got to pay a thousand dollars you know, to pay my loan back that I yeah. don't use at all. I don't it, even know where the diploma is. Right. And by the way, if you stop paying that thousand dollars, that's the one debt you're not allowed to stop. Like your government, you're, you, in a, if, even if you go bankruptcy, if you declare bankruptcy, the government will still garnish your wages for that debt. And they'll put you in that. jail or whatever. Like, yeah. I don't even know. And it's crazy. Why is the most at risk group have the biggest amount of debt? And it's the only debt you can't yeah, get rid of it in a bankruptcy. And then I and then as soon as I came out of school, I said something is sinister about this. Doesn't make sense. I came in with a doctor's degree that cost one hundred and sixty thousand dollars to make an entry level fifty five thousand dollar a year job. I was yeah. like, uh, what's who cares if you have a doctor's degree? Oh, somebody could call you doctor. Fuck, I don't care. I'm yeah. making no money. I'm drowning here. Yeah. And now doing what I love in comedy, it's like, yeah, I forget about the physical therapy stuff, and I'm just like doing this, but. Yeah, it's like even my daughter, like she's four now, and my mom's like, you know, start start saying words like college start, get her in through her head. I'm like, I don't I don't know if I care if she goes to college or not. Yeah. I want her to do what she wants to do. But but they'll get the kids get so much pressure, their guidance count because high schools get funding now based on like who they're sending to college and what colleges and and then colleges get, you know, money depending on what jobs they get. So it's all it's all rigged to keep pushing people through the the system for other reasons other than yeah. that it's good for you. But let me ask you this question. Do you think it's necessary because of the population increase? Otherwise, what would you do with all these people? Where would they work? Especially now with automation, it's like you have to have all these bullshit jobs and you have to have this inflated system that's built on bullshit or else there's just a surplus, like a, super, a superfluous amount of people who are useless. Who you don't like, what do you do with these people? Yeah, well... Let me ask you a question. First off, uh, something like 97 out of 100 people have jobs. Do you think they all deserve jobs? No. <laughs> like, no. You look around, um, when you point. guys are no. looking around a comedy club, you think everybody in the audience, no. you can see who deserves to be working and yeah. who doesn't. Whatever, we do, whatever you do an industry shoot, whatever it is, especially now, 
you'll see like 20 people you could point out in the first three minutes. You're like, that guy does not need to be here. Right. Someone who's yeah. just going like, I'm here to see if you want soda or water. Right. Yeah. And then there's another guy going like, yeah, we need to do makeup. You're like, who wears makeup for fucking shoots anymore? Right. And by People the way, are with conditioned H to just see you with the phone like this. Right. And with HD cameras, you could tell, oh, someone's got this brown cake yes. on their face. You yeah. look worse with makeup <laughs> yeah. on now. It looks weird. Yeah. I, so I, I when we shot we shot a um a little an opening thing for his Comedy Central hour special yeah and that's when it really hit me because it took us like they had a van there not even a van they had a movie fucking yeah they closed down a street they closed out a street yeah. for it um they right had, which like, is like twenty thousand dollars so yeah, that's boom. easily yeah yeah and then they had like uh, makeup uh, producers all these people they did like five million takes different angles I'm going like we could have shot this on our phone. For free, and it would have looked exactly the same. Not only would it have looked exactly the same, it would have pushed my special even further because, like Yana said, people are now conditioned to like, I don't want to see this big fancy shoot thing anymore. I'm like, what is that? Unless it's like a Marvel movie, all the stuff that has organically pushed our podcast and our individual comedy careers forward have been stuff that we're doing on our phone with no makeup, no camera crew, nothing. Even even a video. I'll I have a perfect example. I I or example. Me, I had the special come out, Giannis mentioned, uh, on Comedy Central. I did this bit about what happened to me on 9-11, and it's like shiny on stage, and Comedy Central cut it a certain way and edited it a certain way, and it just came and went. Then I filmed, I did, was at the Comedy Cellar, just a camera on me. I was kind of drunk. I was, you know, it was sloppy, but I did the bits, and it went viral. Got over a million views and pushed my career really far now. And yeah. we didn't need any of that fancy shit. Right, like, you, yeah, right. So you got a million views, and I trust that people... Watch the whole thing. It yes. was like a riveting story, and you 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 did uh, blowing the light like your special. People are doing specials now on on YouTube, and it's who even want like Have you ever watched a Hulu TV show? No. no, like like a Hulu TV show. Like take Andrew Schultz. He was in Here's Johnny, which was by the way a great great show. sitcom. Yeah, and. I'm the only person other than you guys now and Andrew who's ever even heard of that show. I only watched it because I personally knew Andrew and I only I only knew about it because I love Andrew's Instagram. Yeah. So like I didn't, yesterday Giannis and I got hired to do videos uh, to promote this new show called Miracle Workers on TBS, which seems like it could be a good show. But we were like, they rented out this big space, paid us to do this. And we were like, you're just flushing money down the toilet. Yeah, nobody's nobody's going to watch the show. Because yeah. yeah. people here, like, you know, like it's already in its second season. We thought it was the first season. Nobody's even yeah. ever heard of it. I, right. We even asked somebody there. We were like, have you even seen the show? And they were like, no. And I, we were like, what were you doing? What are you doing here? And they're like, we're getting paid to be here. We're influencers. I'm like, this whole place is being just paid to be here. By the way, just put it on the phone. It's all bullshit. Yeah. Because everyone who's saying they're here watching the show is doesn't even know what the show they don't is. Know what it is. I but, heard about the show yesterday when they paid us to be there. Yeah, but watch Miracle Workers on TBS because yeah. the check hasn't cleared yeah. yet. So yeah. Yeah. please watch, watch that show. TBS. I actually do need the money. It's the best <laughs> show. I mean, it's got Daniel Radcliffe in it. Yeah, and Harry it's so Potter. Good. Yeah, it's so good. But yeah, yeah but, but yeah, right. It's got <laughs> it's got all these people. Like again, think of that show. Here's Johnny. It's produced by Paul Reiser. It's about Johnny Carson. It's got all these people in it, yeah. and yet. Nobody has watched it, and over a million people have watched. You know your nine eleven story. You, people are watching. You know, blowing the light. Everyone's every. You could create your people are watching your podcast. They're not watching some no. AM radio talk show. They're watching no. your podcast. Oh, we we're f selling tickets now, like theaters, and for the first time in my career, like our, our careers, we're really so, well. Giannis sold, but even when Giannis, when Giannis was selling a lot of tickets, it was all off YouTube. No yeah. TV show, no TV credits. Yeah, was, Nobody cares about the sitcoms anymore. Yeah. It's like, you, why not, you can make the money, sure, $15,000, $20,000 an episode, that's great. But if you want visibility and you want ticket sales, which gives longevity, which is that, that's what we want, is not TV at all. Doing a podcast like this and you putting it out and your name gets us so much further than if we did The Tonight Show. Yeah, no, like, I, you know, I, I... Why I, didn't the entertainment industry why didn't someone in the entertainment industry like do a tanya harding on this technology like when it was coming out someone should have been like hey this is not good i think they probably thought of it but they kept they kept thinking ah oh, it's gonna be not i mean you've met tv executives sure. right so who's thinking wow we really we really better do something i'm my brain is telling me that this youtube thing's gonna be big <laughs> like they no, didn't say they, they didn't say, see it I, I say i think the smartest people in comedy are comedians. Yeah. That's what I think. I think the smartest people I've met in the comedy business, that's like people adjacent, producers, TV people. I'm always like, and I meet a comic, I'm like, this guy's a lot smarter than the meeting with the people I just had. You know? Yeah, because think about it, how TV is structured. Someone who's, and by the way, we're all pitching TV shows probably, so yeah. 
This is not about well, anybody we're actually meeting. Piece. It's a character <laughs> piece. You know, this is my friend Patty Mulrooney. <laughs> so, so if you think about it, everybody, someone has to choose you to be a, a comedian on some sitcom. There's only, you know, out of like so many working comedians, only like 12 will get chosen for different things. And, and how are they going to choose you? Yet you can, you can do stuff on YouTube whenever you want. This, sure. we could just op- put up some mics and do a podcast and load it up to Apple, Google, whatever. And people will listen. If you have a, if you're funny, if you have a unique voice, if you have something unique to say, uh, you guys have done it over and over again, which is you've chosen your own career as opposed to where, well, I hope this ABC executive chooses me. Yeah. Like, you, no, you don't have to wait anymore. Like I go do the auditions or we go do stuff just like for fun and like little cash grabs. But the real work is our podcast and the organic stuff through Patreon and through the things that we're doing on social media. That's where I'm seeing the ticket sales. Like I'm seeing it. Like we, we just we go on these when we went out to Los Angeles, we go we went on all the big podcasts out there and we saw our numbers grow. The only one we didn't see our numbers growing and it's no fault of his own. It's just the system is when we did Sirius XM in LA, we did Netflix radio. We didn't get one follower. And that was the biggest production. Yeah. They had cameras everywhere, elevator, people taking you. You have a green room and guest room. It's all smoke and mirrors. Nobody gives a shit. When we sat down on the couch with the fighter and the kid with Brian Callen and Brendan Chobb in a very nice studio, but like, you know, we drove there ourselves. We sat down, they put the mics on, no fancy shit. We got thousands of followers yeah. and people buying tickets left and right. Yeah. So most of us, like we know in this room and the Andrew Schultz of the world, we know where the new world is, but most of our peers are still conditioned to think they want to have a, a viewing party because they did the James Corden show. It's like, that's fine. Absolutely, that's fine. I'm not shitting on it, but it's like, if you think that's going to do anything for you anymore to be on any network or anything like that, I mean, you're mistaken. Like you're 100% mistaken. You're going to you're going to drown in this new wave. Yeah. You know? By the way, thank you for being a Patreon member. We appreciate, <laughs> yeah, appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look, you, buy that million dollar episode with Tim yeah. Dillon. The Secret least we could okay, do well, is be here. What and if you Tim need Dillon anything episode? else, we'll do it. We'll pick up your laundry, whatever you want. <laughs> the Tim Dillon episode, it was one of those things where if I got to be honest, it's on our Patreon, patreon.com slash Bay Ridge Boys. We have it out there. It was one of those things where we started taking shots at people. No, let's not tell them anything that's on there. Well, <laughs> one million dollars. I'll tell you this. I'll tell you, what I will tell you is this, is about, it's a podcast that 20 minutes in, we felt like we could never release. Yeah. And then we did another hour and 20 minutes that's after that. Happened. So yeah. that's what happened. That's so what imagine happened. an hour and 40 minutes of three comedians going cutthroat, saying whatever they wanted, thinking we're never going to release this. So as if we're in privately in our own homes and we fucking rage. That's the true story. What that's ha- a true story. What happened 20 minutes in, I went 20 minutes in, I'm going, whoa, 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 guys. I went, whoa, guys, we, we got to stop. We can't, we got to start over. We can't release this. And Tim goes, of course we're going to release it. You know, he's the, he's the like <laughs> cookie monster of comedy. Of course we're going to release it. I'm not going to release it. Yeah. And so then we kept going, did another hour until Tim goes, we can't release this. And you know it's bad when Tim Dillon goes, yeah. uh-oh, yeah. we got to stop. You know it's yeah. bad when the guy who told the booker of a late night show, when she said to him, I would love to work with you sometime, and he said, of course, I'd like to work with you too, uh, as soon as you're in your rightful place of employment at a catering hall. <laughs> That's what he said. That's what he said to her. He doesn't care he at doesn't all. He doesn't care. He but, just did he goes, I'll, I'll gladly work with you when I can take a shrimp off your tray. But that, but yeah. that, but see, what's what's great there is he's got a point of view. You guys have a point of view. Think about like good comedy. It's not. It. it, it, it think about Tim Dillon's comedy. He's got this point of view. He could just riff yeah. off of his point of view. And if he knows it's coming from this core, you see with the audience, he doesn't care what the audience thinks. It's just coming from this core. Yes. If they don't. They're. This is my party. They're invited to it. They don't have to come. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. And I get it. In like 2020 dynamics, it's like what the podcast is like wearing people's ears for an hour or two hours a week. It's like they when they when we come to their city, they want to buy tickets like they're supporting a family member. Like we get messages all the time. I'm sure you do, too. Like, hey, your podcast gets me through. I love listening to your podcast. I feel like I know you. You know, they'll come up to me and be like, oh, hey, how's your family member you spoke about? I don't even remember speaking about that. So it's like TV. Or if it was a real one or not. Or if it was a real one or not. Yeah. So like TV shows and movies, it's like the people have to stop their life and like sit down and watch. And it's like, we're on the go now. So podcast is perfect. I'm walking, I'm going to the gym, I'm driving, I'm listening and I'm listening. And then I'll say, Hey, I'll be here and they'll buy the tickets. Yeah. And, so it's and great. you know, um, uh, uh, would you guys get death threats also? <laughs> he does. I used to, I, really? I haven't got him in a while, but I, uh, yeah. Cause I first, I had these two viral characters, Maurice and Mr. Yeah. Panos that kind of got big. And, um, ironically, Mr. Panos, cause I'm Greek was the one that I would get death threats from. And I've, mm. I've gotten a handful of death threats from Greeks about 
the character because they felt like the character made Greeks look so bad. Do you ever get nervous? No. Yeah. No, because no. I, I just, you know, we're, we're New York City kids. I know, like, if someone's going to hurt you, they're not going to they're not gonna email you about it. You yeah, know, right. no one's going to be like, dear Mr. Pappas, I'm offended. I'm going to find you and kill you. It's just like they're going to show up and kill you. Right. It's like when the guy killed John Lennon, he didn't, like, tell him, hey, I'll meet you. He didn't text you. him. Yeah, he didn't text him <laughs> and let him know I'm going to kill you. He was, like, talking to whoever, you know, delusional dog he was talking to. And he was like, I got to end the 60s. And he was the only person he was talking to was the imaginary person in his crazy head. So it's like, that's the guy I'm scared of. I'm scared of the guy who's like doing this, watching me at a live show, <laughs> right. more than the guy that's like, I'm upset because you called Cypriots, you know, not real Greeks or whatever, you know? Yeah, that's funny. You yeah. get them? You get death threats? I, I get death threats. And I just Why? Wondering. It's all right. Your guy looks like he can defend himself. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I did just start going to the gym, though. Yeah, you're but, ready. Uh, <laughs> well, like a week ago. And I've already skipped four of those of the past week. Uh, what are people threatening just... you for? For being good uh, with money? No, well, I'm actually really bad with money, yeah. but uh, uh, what do people not like Jewish people? <laughs> <laughs> when did that happen? I didn't know that. Uh, yeah, that's news to me. I, I have got a few of those. Like, I got one the other day that the guy like rambled for a while, and he was using my name, so he clearly knew he was texting. And then in all caps, he's like, "My priority in life right now is you are going to die." Jesus. And uh, and then he sent the message the next day, the next day, and finally I had to write back and I said, "Listen, I had to." I was just making this up. I had to report this to the FBI. I'm sorry if they visit you or whatever. And he st suddenly said, oh, no, I, I was the wrong number. I had no idea. And I'm like, well, you used my name and my kid's name, so I don't know <laughs> what you're talking well, he about. Had your, he had your kid's name and yeah. everything. And, uh, but, you know, it happens. Why, why, why do I get uh, death threats, Steve? You get death threats for a because of you. reason. Because I think, as I mentioned, the way you look, the way you talk. Because like, I'm ugly. You're and I think you're handsome. I think you're a cute. I'll fucking kiss you right on the lips. The first thing I thought was like, "He's a cute kid." Did not help the cause. Yeah. Um, I like that you got three producers and nobody's got their shoes on. That's the that's the new world. Audio, video. Steve Steve's the producer. He was a producer yeah. for thirty years on TV. Yeah. Made the right choice finally. <laughs> yes. Moved to the podcast world. Yeah. We were just talking about Charlie Chaplin because Charlie Chaplin, he he hated the movie scene. He hated having to like audition for directors and producers and getting shitty roles. So he started his own movie. So he started United Artists just so he could. Right. He was like the first kind of podcaster, really. Right. Like he chose his own thing. Right. So, and that's kind of like what well, I mean. Hedy you guys Lamar are doing kind of did that too, didn't she? she I think tried. she was with him. I think they were. I think were Maybe, they together yeah. with United. He did it with three other. He did it with Mary something Pickford or whatever. I don't know who he did it well, with. Well, let me just say this: if anybody's threatening James Altucher, <laughs> you're gonna have to fucking deal with these two beefcakes. <laughs> Absolutely. Rich, boy. This yeah. kid can throw hands, and I bite. Yeah. So good yeah. luck trying to get to him through us because yeah. we're a couple kids from the outer boroughs yeah. and we know how to throw hands. I'll hurt you physically and he'll hurt you emotionally. Hurt this you kid emotionally. can really dig deep with his words. Yes. And He's a bitch. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I know all the lawyers. So yeah, so yeah. the, the, the Jewish connection works a little bit. Absolutely. I know, so, but look, we live in a world now where it's like, you know, like, like we were, when we went out in LA, like we, I mean, people... It's like unfathomable to like think about like our fathers and grandfathers, like how much work they had to do to make the money that some of these guys like you guys in the podcast world were making with no shoes and socks on. I mean, we did the L.A. podcast. Everybody was barefoot and they're in five million dollar homes yeah. and they don't. They have to yeah. just I'm watching their toes wiggle <laughs> and I'm like, these guys have got millions of dollars. Yeah. So it's like just a new world. And it's like I feel like so many of our friends are in this old model yeah. where it's like if you can just think about what the new world is, it's like we can all have it. We all have the talent to have it. We can we can all make the money. Yeah, and the know? money is that, that's the thing people don't realize. The money is out there unless you take an uh, and I, I'm not putting down like a, a classic Procter and Gamble nine to five job, although I am. Where but uh, <laughs> yeah. you, when you when you're told okay, we're gonna pay you nineteen ninety five an hour. Uh, that's you're capping yourself. You're not. Sure. You're not kind of jacking into the flow yeah. where it could be sky's the limit, depending on the quality Whatever. you bring to the table and how you present yourself and so on. Like think about it. Like with you're you're doing you're, you're so your podcast history hyenas. By the way, introduction: Chris Destafano, yeah. Giannis Papas, yes. history hyenas. Yeah. Uh, greatest podcast. It's one of the few podcasts I actually listen to Thank all the way through each time. Thank and uh, no, seriously, I I for I've been doing this podcast for six years. I've only started watching or listening to podcasts in the past six months, in the entire six years. I listen to you guys. I, I now listen to me. I never listened to me before. And I listen to Tim. Yeah. Uh, Appreciate it. 
Joe Rogan, you can't listen to every single episode, yeah, but I listen long. to as many yeah. Joe Rogan. Schultz, I'm sure you listen to Schultz. Yeah, Schultz, uh, depending on which one, like, because uh, he has so many also. But yeah, I, like, your black flagrant. friends over, you're listening to him. Wh- yeah, which one? Your if your black friends, friends yeah. come over, you're listening to Flavor yeah. too. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. But yeah. I used to like, uh, he doesn't do inside jokes anymore. Inside jokes was no, great. No, that was good. Inside yeah. jokes was good. Yeah. Um, and then uh, and then he just got his new podcast studios. I'm going to check it out. And uh, I know. Uh, so he's moving up the, the podcast world. But uh, but yeah, so you guys are, you're not historians. No. And but so what? Like, but we're not we're passionate really full, about yeah, it. Yeah, we're not yeah. even fully straight guys. So yeah. we're not really full anything. We're not full anything. We're all almost of one thing. But we feel like you know the money was always going to come second. Like we just started because we both love history. We love comedy. We're comedians that love history. So we were like, well, forget it. We're not worried about like how we're going to make every dollar in this. We're like, just put the put the product out. And now we're seeing the money come, like, you know, in little spurts. We're seeing it come now. And I'll be honest with you, we're, we're having such a good time. It's so like. There, when you don't have production people or notes coming from a lot of places, when you're a comedian, your dream is to be able to create comedy just from your mouth to the air to people's ears. So we're doing now what we do live without any input from anybody. And it's like, it, it's a freeing feeling. I feel like I'm back in school being a, a class clown again, except nobody can kick me out of school now. Well, and the thing right. is, that's how you're going to make money because that's when you're uniquely you a hundred percent of your talents come to the forefront instead of like, Oh, I got to learn how to like plug this in or take that out and, or type this memo. Uh, like, 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 you know, again, you could, you're allowed to be talk about history. No PhD in history gets more views than you got. You guys yeah, get, yeah. You're, you call yourselves Wikipedia sluts, which is fine. Cause most people don't <laughs> even read Wikipedia. Yeah. So if you're talking about Harriet Tubman, I, I learned something about Harriet Tubman. You know, whatever. Our whole, that's our whole goal for our podcast is we want to, we want to make you laugh. It's a comedy podcast first, but we also like, you can regurgitate a fact or two at a party yeah. that night. That's yeah. what yeah. we're trying to say. We're not trying to reinvent history. We want here. to tell you a little bit about Harriet Tubman. And then he wants to call himself Harriet Tubman. Yeah. I, I want mean, to put it's... my dick and balls between my legs and Buffalo bill myself and say, I'm Harriet Tubman. That's Hey. Harriet Tubman's brother, who wants to get a sex change, a little and yin, that's a little just what yin. it is. Yeah, that, a little that yeah. night at cocktail parties everywhere, everyone was saying, "Oh, I'm Harriet Tubman." Yeah. <laughs> that's what it is. Where, where'd you get that? Yeah. No, I just made it up. People right have now. already <laughs> messaged us saying next year their Halloween costume is Harriet Tubman, Harriet Tubman and they're just yeah. going to go as Harriet Tubman. So you sell it as merch, actually. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's like that's what our podcast is. But we learn a lot of shit too. Like we'll yeah. discover, especially uncomfortable truths. We learn a lot about that. We learn a lot of stuff where you're like. Oh wait, society says this and the news says this, but if you dig deeper, here's what actually happened. But it's not palatable and sexy that that happened, so well, they know, move on. It's so easy in this era to because it's like uncomfortable truths now are considered uncomfortable truths now because liberal arts education has gotten so overly politically correct that they sort of gloss over a lot of those ugly realities that we know are true just because we live in the world now and we know that's what the world is. So, of course, it always was that way. Right. You know, nothing's ever purely one way or the other. It's always sort of like yeah. these gray zones. And that's what that's what history is. And you talk about marketing campaigns like we learned a big one. You know, I read this book, 1776. You ever read that book by David McCullough? Yeah, yeah. Excellent book. And then I did what I loved about it so much is it was from he did most of his research from the British British point of view. And then I read some more books associated with it, especially stuff about George Washington and like even the whole idea of freedom from the British Empire. When we were doing research for the podcast, we found out that was just a marketing campaign. The people who lived in 1770s, 1780s, they didn't want freedom from Britain. Britain was being nice to them. They just wanted to be, they just wanted to be represented in Parliament. That's all they wanted. But after 1775, when the US troops or colonial troops were getting their asses kicked, and people were like, I don't want, they only signed up for seven months. They were like, oh, we don't want to sign up again. George Washington, Benjamin Franklin, all the great thinkers of our time are like, we have to give them a rallying cry to stay. So they came up with just one night in a cabin. Like, what if we, what if the new pitch is let's get freedom from England? Let's be, let's get our own independent sovereign nation. Let's do that. And most of the people at the time were like, we don't want that. But it was the only thing that they could do. And then they started circulating all papers and pamphlets and were like, hey, we're going to be free. So people started to be like, okay, let's be free. Even though that's not really what we want, let's be free. And then when the war ended, it didn't end because the mighty colonial army and the French army overcame it, overcame the mighty British army. The British army could have stayed another year and destroyed them. They were like, this isn't worth it anymore. They're like, we're losing money on them now. Let's, we, we own so many other colonies and we own, you know, we own Bermuda and we own other places in Europe. Let's just leave them alone, give them their country, and we'll go back to England. It's fine. But, you know, as a schoolboy, you learn that Paul Revere and right. the little ragtag army overcame them. And none of it is true. It's just been a, it's a marketing campaign. Well, and also what always strikes me interesting, that war lasted a really long time. 
Yeah. Like it was going into the mid 1780s. Like yeah. we think, oh, we declared independence and suddenly no. we're free. Yeah. And it was it was going on and on and on. Kids were dying in Hell the winters. Yeah. And it was fought more than just the colonies. It was in the South America. It was in it was in uh, parts of Canada and it kept kept going. Yeah. You know, and so many people got dragged into it really for kind of I mean, I don't want to say nothing because obviously we got our independence. But I just thought as a kid, oh, this is I was told one story that's just simply not true. It's just so many years have went by that the new narrative is this. But that's not actually the truth. Right. And they say they say history is written by the winners. But I think also it's really only a small percentage of the winners that are actually writing it. So like the the Boston Tea Party, that was totally just a marketing. Sure. Thing. Like I don't even. It wasn't really that, oh, they were trying to raise our or raise taxes on us. There was some weird thing. I forget exactly the details now, but uh, there was some weird thing where just a certain group of people weren't going to make as much money, but their competition was being opened up in interesting ways. And so the Samuel Adams of the world were like, nope, let's just yeah. cut this down right now. And it was yeah. it was kind of against it was a whole reverse of how they presented it. But well, they mobilize the people by saying like they're trying to hurt you, but it's really like, they're hurt me, and I need you to fight for me. Yeah, exactly. And then, yeah. and then, what it is actually, what's even the benefit of U.S. independence? Like, yes, we did fight for something, but okay, Canada didn't fight, and they're pretty independent now. And yeah, Australia, New Zealand, yeah, countries are bigger than the U.K. in a lot of ways. So, sure. uh, I mean, now the U.K. is going to lose Scotland probably. They just lost. They're going to lose Ireland. It, yeah. It's yeah. basically a tiny little yeah. thing without the wars. Yeah. So I don't know what. And then the, and then UK also freed the slaves before US did. So Way the, before. Like yeah. 1831 or something. Yeah. So yeah. why did we even fight that war? Oh, no. It, I know. Even in it, when I was reading that 1776 book, that was one of the biggest things when British soldiers would go over there and they would report back to the, you know, their superiors who are in England. They were like, the biggest atrocity that they're seeing in the 13 colonies is the slaves. They're like, I can't believe they're doing this to these people still. So it's kind of like where we were more like the bad guys to the British. They were like, why are you enslaving these people? What, what, why would you do that? Like, by the time, you know, we wouldn't have slaves fighting our armies for even in World War II. It was like, oh, a black unit. Britain had black soldiers come over in 1776. They were like, yeah, these are people. Why, why are you enslaving everybody? Yeah. So it's just like. It's just like this whole idea of shit. I'm like, I just question everything now from doing this history podcast. I'm just like, oh, wait a second. What is the truth? Here? And I'm not saying I'm going to come this conspiracy theory and like some things I'm just like, accept. I'm like, people like, oh, your face, you give the, your face to the government with the iPhone. I'm like, they can have my fucking face. I don't care. It's just like, I'm, I'm going to pick on every little thing. Yeah, but it is did. interesting to learn about history and see like, hey, man, like this, it's all marketing. It's all what they, what these people want you to think. And you just have to be like, oh, are you going to be a player in that game or not? Kind of thing. Yeah, because look at, look at like, uh, uh, you, you know, World War II, you can say there's a lot of reasons. Okay, Japan was this. Germany was this. Germany's has all uh, is slaughtering well, everybody. Always getting weird. The Germans are always Germans getting, getting weird. weird. You always got to keep your eye on those kids. Yeah. They're yeah. always like up to something. You kind of like, they're just, you know, they're not, they're kind of like just, you know how psychopaths just kind of like... <laughs> trying to figure out emotions they look at you kind of uh, like that's just kind of what the germans are always doing They're like what's it like to feel you know and then they just want to they want to consume you because they want to feel like they want to they want to eat your feelings so they can feel. are wild people yeah, but yeah. but to your point from your podcast actually is that most of america was either german or or had some german descent so we kind of had to figure out how to lure the japanese into this so we sure. had a, a rallying cry okay now we got to get into this right we lured them into bombing pearl harbor by the way we didn't say six million Jews were killed in Germany. It's not like we went in there to save the Jews. The Jews all died in Germany. Yeah. So we saved almost zero of them. Yeah. Jews even tried to escape to America. We Franklin Roosevelt turned back the ship and they ended up in sure. concentration camps. As a matter of fact, I read another book called The Nazi Symbiosis, which is a wild book. Like if you just ever randomly came over my house, it's like a book with a big swastika on it. And it's like, <laughs> no, 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 I'm not pro them at all. It's just I learned the history of America's enemies. So, 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 but in that book, it was interesting. It was talking about like eugenics and like what, what the Holocaust like main purpose was, of course, of, you know, they wanted to get rid of, you know, uh, you know, have the master race and get rid of what they were labeling as the inferior race and blah, 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 blah. But the eugenics part of it was the, was the part that the scientists wanted. And that was just about, you know, manipulating genes and trying to build this Ubermensch, Uberman. And they, the German, according to this book, the German scientists got the idea from American and British scientists 15 years before. So there's certain you know, documents that in this book sort of prove that, hey, Winston Churchill and FDR and other 
Allied superiors knew that the con- knew that the Holocaust was happening, and they claim they didn't. They knew, but the reason why they didn't go in and infiltrate it right away is because they wanted to see what experiments, what what was going to be yielded from these experiments. What were they doing to manipulate the genes? Were they were the, was Hitler and his scientists were they finding any type of gene manipulation that was new science? And it was only after two three years when it, they just kind of stopped the science and just started killing them, you know, in waves, then they infiltrated it. So it's like the blood is on everybody's hands, according to this book from World War II. It's like, hey, the Allied powers knew it was happening. They didn't stop it because they wanted to see what's, what the science was. So everybody's a piece of shit in war, right, you know? Like, again, I don't know, like, when you, when you were growing up, like, for me, uh, some, for some reason, just coincidentally, at the end of the year in history, it always broke off. Oh, World War II is over. That sorry, this school year is over. We can't right. really get into Korea and Vietnam. Right. M- maybe next year we'll get to it. Right. They never do until yeah, never. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, like most most people, even me, I don't even know that much about the Korean and Vietnam War. Other you than know? like Mash. Yeah, yeah, that's and it. there's no TV shows in Vietnam. Like that's, that was just yeah, yeah, that, was just that. just, that's not sitcom friendly Vietnam. Yeah, well, we all, and we also didn't win that war, so that that's one that they kind of like. Well, that's why they stopped the history yeah, books there. Like, yeah, 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 yeah we didn't like, win at yeah. all. Well, and also, did we win Iraq and Afghanistan? Like no, Afghanistan's still happening. Yeah. Yeah. Iraq, they just kicked us out, yeah. or they're claiming to kick us out. Yeah, yeah. they don't. Iraq doesn't even exist as a country anymore, really. Well, the I thing know. is, we can't even win war. The, 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 the dirty secret is you got to keep that quiet because we can't really win wars anymore because we don't have like hungry soldiers anymore. You know, it's like. Like, we got to use mercenaries and stuff because I'm not going to war. I mean, life is too good here. This is this is Rome again, and we are at the peak of Rome, and it is comfortable. It is bread and circus. So uh, you're going to recruit some 15-year-old kid to give up his iPhone? Even poor people here eat meat. You're going to tell those kids to go die for you in a foreign land? It's not going to happen. Yeah. But, you know, uh, you, you go to a third-world country, they're ready. That's why, we, you know, we're about to get rolled over by the Chinese. They're coming. Oh, the Chinese are coming. Yeah, yeah. they're well, coming. We, oh, we had on Inside a, and out, they're going to beat us. There he is. He's got He's ready. <laughs> you got one in here already. Yeah. Where the fuck did you come from? No, Jay's, Jay's from Malaysia. We'll protect Jay. Yeah, well, yeah. we're from Brooklyn, so it's all Chinese to us. Yeah, we don't fucking know the differences. Just joking. Jay, yeah, Jay, just Jay and Ronnie Chang speak the same language. Yeah. So, oh, okay. So, yeah. Ronnie Chang's, I don't know. He's Chinese Ronnie to Chang. me. But the Chinese are doing great. They're hungry. They're like, they're like America was like in the 50s and 40s, like hungry. Right. Right. Immigrant, you know, they're hungry. They're coming up. Their middle class is growing. And we're just sitting there going like, you know, what's going on? You know? Yeah. yeah. Well, and also they're not afraid to try things technically. They're not worried about, oh gosh, what are the ethics of this? So we were talking to a guy, uh, Jamie Metzler, he wrote this book, Hacking Darwin, that genomics is just at this point where you could start playing around with s- turning stem cells into embryos. Like a couple could have a million embryos and then rank them in terms of whatever, you know, intelligence or strength or whatever. You could rank the embryos in terms of like how X they're going to be and then abort 999,999 of them and have the one live. And the wow. Chinese can already, within 10 years, Jamie was saying, the Chinese will be able to do this. We're not going to do it. Right. And they really will have a bunch of super humans <laughs> yeah, of some sort. Right. Yeah. That might all die at the age of 36, but they don't care. Like, right, right. You know, they're they're going to find out. Yeah, yeah <laughs> right. right. They'll find out. Yeah. But th- by then, we might be overrun in some weird way that we don't even understand. Yeah, right. I mean, the, fu- the potential for what can be done now makes it really wild to think about what the future is going to be because they totally can clone people now. Yeah. You can sort of make a cyber like, but they could probably implant like, you know, intel artificial intelligence into you. So it's like, what is the future going to be like? Well, and I think I think there's I some think it guessing. might be time to just shake, theory- shake the board and go away. Some theories think that there are already clones out here, but you just don't know. Prob- could be. Well, probably probably in China. I mean, here there's all these laws though because we're we're so concerned about a religion created thousands of years ago that we can't affect the people who are sensitive to that. We we make laws about everything. China's just going for it. Like on yeah. AI, on genomics, on stem cell research. They're just, you know, we had Kai Fu Lee, who's a big uh, AI investor in China. He he was like, we're already dead on AI in China. Some people disagree, but there's no reason why they can't pass us because we have laws. You know, you say, right now, the whole facial recognition thing, we're not allowed to do it. But they're... They're doing it. They know where everybody in the country is. They're putting uh, social scores and everybody, like how uh, much of a good citizen is this person versus this citizen. It's like they're giving like everybody an Uber rating and then acting accordingly. So I don't know what effects this will have on our future, but we just do things so cautiously. Right, we're right. like afraid to experiment. Right, right. Well, well Giannis talks we're burdened about- by, bur- burdened by morality. I mean, it's, you know, it's like, 
those things do come with ethical questions, no? Yeah, they, yeah. they do. So you have to ask, like, is yeah. it a healthy thing? But but at the same time, while we're figuring that out, and, and, and I'm not saying it's not worth it to figure that out, but while we're figuring that out, they're going to have the million embryo baby. Yeah. And right. Yeah. So. But it also feels like that's like the next frontier. It's like, what else can we do as a human species? Like we've yeah. done everything that we yeah. can do. So yeah. it feels like that's the next thing is, well, now you play God and make people out of not, you know, the miracle way you make them in a lab. And it's yeah. almost mm-hmm. ironic that the farther technology has gotten, the more it's kind of reverted or come full circle to what it originally started as. Like this is a radio show essentially. And now podcasts have become sort of the premier way people consume entertainment and that's what they used to do when like the radio was invented yeah, when the Yankees so, right. were winning those world series yeah. in the 20s and 30s it was the radio which you is know? Yeah. wild to yeah. think about how far it comes it's kind of come it's kind of it's almost like you know the universe the farthest point you go you're back to where you started well well think about how you which is commu- why i think we're over <laughs> well well and think <laughs> think about how you communicate too though like how lately in the past few years, people now are going, getting back to texting everybody. Like my kids just text. They don't even use email. Right. So email was like going to be it. And then there was, you know, web stuff and right. this and that. But now just everybody's just back to oh SMS text. Like, did you did you text them? And right. we don't even really email as much anymore. Yeah. I pretty know, I pretty soon like, we'll, we'll send a bird to each other. Yeah, yeah, I know. I notice even like in emergencies, like people will like text, like house is on fire. It's like fucking call. <laughs> yeah. Pick up the phone, yeah. you know, but people are, don't even are conditioned to do that. Did you not get my text? No. Yeah. Right. And yeah. texting is the oldest thing. It's like Morse code. Like was older than the phone. So, yeah. Yeah. you know, I bet you most people's phones, the least, the least. I the icon that's tapped the least is the call button. Right. People, I mean, there's times where my phone, I don't call anybody on my phone for days, but I'm communicating with everybody. Steve calls me a lot, but I never return his call. So (laughs) (laughs) I don't like to return. I don't like to talk to people on the phone. Like it's awkward. Yeah, I'd rather just, yeah, we could communicate. I mean, that's what they were saying. I was reading another article about like how like STDs and like um, uh, pregnancies on like the first date are like the highest they've ever been because especially young people are communicating through social media or texting for weeks before they meet. They've already given up all their secrets about each other. You feel like they know each other, but they physically actually never met. So by the time they actually do meet first time, they're having unprotected sex and it's leading to problems because they, you know, cause you, cause if we're, if I'm commu- talking to your phone, I'm really talking to you. I mean, a phone's a part of us. So I was reading that article like, wow, that's fucking really, really, really interesting. But I get how it makes sense now. Yeah. You know? And, uh, and, and to your point also is, uh, you know, Podcast not it's like it's like it's almost like a bad radio show, right? And yet this is the way like Joe Rogan is the most popular, yeah. most consumed media on the planet with the podcast. Well, and look at that girl Lily Singh, the Lily Singh yeah. who's got who's got a, a show on NBC, like a like a late late show that's a major network show. Her fans think she's a sellout because they know her from YouTube. And they know her from the not shiny I, stuff. I think that show also is getting canceled. I think it wasn't getting the ratings. It she's the most popular be. person on YouTube. She had billboards all over New York City. It was their YouTube experiment in mainstream advertising. She was huge. She is huge on YouTube, but somehow the sh- TV doesn't work. And yet, when you get called onto the stage for comedy, they'll say you've seen him on the Tonight Show or this right. show or that show or right. opening up for Lily Singh or whatever. It's it's they won't say oh you've seen him have a million views on this no. one YouTube clip they it, it, it doesn't make sense really there's still this um who do we have on who was pitching a show uh and I'm like you already have billion oh Nas Nas Daily said billions of views on Facebook his Facebook videos he did a video a day for like a thousand days or three thousand days something like that and he had billions of views each one gets like ten million views now at least he can't get a TV show on and I'm like why are you even going for a TV show and he's like there's still that there's still that brand thing happening. Stigma, like it's, yeah. it's like a market. It's again, it's like a marketing scam that where we think if it's on that screen, it's more important than if it's on the smaller screen. It's conditioned thinking, it's from, conditioned thinking. from that era. That's like, there's still fumes running from that era. Yeah. Those yeah. LA comedians who we met, like you can't pay Joe Rogan to, to do a TV show. Why would he do that? Yeah. yeah. He would lose money. Or most pe- most of our most successful peers in comedy specifically, that's all we can talk about. Cause we know it would lose money doing a TV show. Yeah. The real successful ones. I mean, they would, you know, they're making $60,000 a, a day doing their podcast. Yeah. Some of them way more. Yeah. And it's like, you can't make that doing TV, yeah. you know, no chance. And, and, and it'll be seen by way less people. And they're making yeah. so much money live from that exposure from their podcast or their viral videos or vlog or whatever. I mean, I think what's happened is because seeing someone on a screen is so commonplace. Now it's kind of reversed. Whereas it used to be, you know, seeing someone on TV was the unique thing because there was so few channels and you had to be one of a select few to be on it. 
it was so amazing to see. Now it's commonplace. You see everyone's on a screen. It's more often you'll see somebody in a screen than you will see them in real life because everyone's looking down. So to, to right. go see someone live now has become sort of the new TV show. It's like, that's the unique thing. Let's go see them live. Yeah, but and back so that, to the real original. Yeah, so right. now we're back to like, we're back to ancient Greece now. You right. know, it's like people are back in the amphitheater watching your live podcast or whatever. And now it's because- stand-up show. And like it used to be like, I know like my manager said to me a couple of weeks ago, he was like, oh, you know, like you post, I post, I was posting a lot of like my clips, one minute stand-up clips. He's like, but if, if you post it on Instagram, then you can't do it live. I was like, they want you to do it live. They actually get mad now. If they, if that's what they know you from, they want you to do the bit like a singer. Like how the singer, they want yeah. you to sing that song. It's like, no, we want you to do that yeah. bit live for us because we saw it on the internet and that's one thing, but we want to see you physically do it live. The, the other thing is uh, that I think your manager might be missing is that they don't, they don't watch every medium all the time. Like mm -hmm. if someone, you just launch your TikTok, for instance. Yeah. If, if someone, if some kid sees you on TikTok, he doesn't necessarily look you up on YouTube or listen no. to your podcast. Yeah. Like I used to... Um, this was even like 10, 15 years ago. I used to lot, write a lot about finance stuff. I would put the exact same article on Forbes, the Financial Times, the Wall Street Journal, and even in a book where I can't take it down in a worst case scenario. Not a single person ever said to me, didn't you just write this last yeah. week for Forbes? Zero people said, editors didn't say it to me. Yeah. Uh, readers didn't say it to me. Publishers didn't say it to me. No one knew that I was taking the exact same words, word for word, and just putting it everywhere. Yeah. And, and I'm not saying that's because people are stupid. It's just that they have their lane and that's what they, they sure. you want to spread stuff around because some people only watch TikTok and they're like, uh, Instagram's over or, or nah, I don't want, my kids will have one platform and they'll say, nah, nah, dad, don't do those other platforms, but they all have a different platform that they right. watch. Yeah. So yeah, it's, I get it. What's interesting to me is that that really concerns me though, is like, a lot of the audience, when you meet them, you meet audience members, the majority of them, they're like, they're also aspiring podcast or comedians. You're like, does anyone work anymore? Like, yeah. what are we all doing? When I, when it's I like, what do you do? They're like, I'm, I got a podcast. I'm like, what is your podcast about? They're like, we met some girl last night. And she was like, it's about, and then she started talking and I didn't know what she was talking about when she explained what her, what her podcast was. She was like, she was like, it's about health. You remember? She was like, it's, it's about health. health, but it's not like about health. It's about like we critique people who are about health, who tell you about health, who are doing it in a self-help way. We kind of talk about <laughs> them. Like, and I'm going, what are you talking? I'm like, what kind of twilight zone are we living in that your podcast is a podcast about other people who have podcasts, who are podcasting self-help things to you so you can create a podcast and learn how to be a podcaster? I'm going like, this is getting And it's got 25,000 views on it, uh, 25,000 followers I mean, on Instagram. This is so. just like a circle That's jerk funny. of like... Of we're trying to entertain each other. Well, like I, rem <laughs> I remember when I started stand up in like 2009. Stand up New York is one of the first places I did um an open mic at, and I remember I was working as a, it's a horrible open mic. Oh uh, yeah, so <laughs> no, but 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 you want the shitty ones in the beginning. Okay. You really want those ones. That's what you want. You want mm. it to be like five o'clock, and there's six people in there, and the other only six people are other comedians that hate you and don't want to listen to you. Because if you can make them laugh, it's either really dark, too dark for a regular audience, or it's just a good good joke. And you're like that, I can keep it. But I remember. Going there, and I would get out of work at 3.30 from downtown, come up here, get up here by 4.15, and open mic started at 5, and there would be a, like a 10-person line. So you'd sign your name up, and maybe maybe out for the whole three hours, 20 people would come to the open mic, and that was a lot. We were just in Los Angeles. They were saying now at the Comedy Store, and I'm sure it's the same at these at open mics here, there's a five-hour wait <laughs> to, oh to sign up at the Comedy <laughs> Store. And it's like, so, so that was jarring to me because like the amount of people that want to do this now it's like the, the what the fuck? How can everybody do this? Well, they can't because I think there's like take comedy as an example. I think there's five thousand people who will say who will list their profession on taxes as comedians, right? There's fifty Netflix specials a year, so that's only one percent of those. And then there's some podcasts that make money, but there's two million podcasts. The average uh, podcast gets two hundred downloads an episode, and so no, to your point, nobody's making money at any of these things. So they're just doing a lot of things and seeing what hits. And then they work at a candy store or whatever. I don't right, know. Right, right, right. So who knows? Yeah, that's, that's true, too. We, 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 we heard that, too, that only 1% of all the podcasts in the world get over like 15,000 downloads or something like that. Yeah, I would say even, even less than 1%. I mean, well, that brings us full circle to like the need for bullshit. Because this bullshit employs so many people. Yeah. If you cut it down to brass tacks, you could probably cut 70% of every workforce now 
with automation because just robots can do everything. And you, all you, you need remember, is like entertainers and someone to hand you a slice of pizza and that's it. I mean, even before that though, like the last, the last nine to five job I worked at at a big major corporation was in 1997. And I used to look around and think to myself, nobody here is actually doing any work. Like the average eight hour workday, I would measure people like they, they would work maybe like a half hour to an hour and a half. Like right. the other times they were talking to their friends. They were talking on the phone. It's three hour lunches, cigarette breaks downstairs. There was people, people in general don't really work. It was just, they're just, and then I think the financial crisis came along and every CEO was like, phew, now we have an excuse. Let's just fire everybody who we wanted to fire for the past 15 years. Right. And then, then ever since then, we've been kind of trying to come back from that. But yeah, a lot of people left the workforce. A lot of baby boomers retired. So I don't even know if it's automation. Like, and I feel like I talk and too much about Andrew Yang, but like, everything's hmm? like overseas. Uh, yeah, yeah, everything's overseas and automated. Yeah. But Andrew Yang goes on about automation, and he, he mentions how 80 to 90 million people have left the workforce in the past 10 years. But a lot of that's just baby boomers deciding, eh, screw it, I'm not going to work anymore. I'm retiring early, was earlier than I planned, so I'm going to move to Kansas City or whatever. Kansas City's a great place. I'm not offending Kansas City. But uh, <laughs> yeah. I've never been to Kansas City. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay, wait, side story. I was at a, a dinner. It was like a networking dinner. And this guy comes up to me and starts talking and he has like thick white hair. He's the only guy in the place in a really like nice suit, but it was like a blue suit and a red tie. And I said, you know, you should be a politician. You look like a politician. And he's like, well, how did you know? Did someone tell you? And I'm like, no. And he says, well, I'm the governor of Kansas. And, uh, wow. and so then he sits next to me and he's like, you should really consider Kansas. Like for, you know, $300,000, you get a six bedroom house and, uh, <laughs> I'm like, all right, I'll consider it, but yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, you could just tell. That's what I'll do is consider it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's the thing you got to be in Kansas. Uh, yeah, that's I don't that's want the problem. Yeah, I don't yeah. want to be. I'd rather be in these cities like New York City and be around people than get the fucking house of my dreams in the middle of nowhere. I just don't want it. Because I mean, Chris says it all the time. We can pretend. I mean, we could sit around and pretend. I mean, we could sit here and do character pieces and pretend like other places matter besides New York City. But everything is a suburb of New York the City. The truth is this, this is the James. center of the this universe. This is the truth. New York City and Italian food are really the only things that this human race cares about. That's really okay? It. I mean, because because now it's like everything's up for debate. Yeah. It's like I heard a guy saying the other day, oh, Houston's a comparable city to New York. I said, go fuck yourself. Yeah. Houston's a fine city. The whole thing's off the side of the highway. Then they said they like Vietnamese food. I said, are you, are you fucking out of your mind? <laughs> Vietnamese food? Yeah, it's fine. But every time I've eaten a Vietnamese sandwich, I'm like, you know what this needs? Sauce. Yeah. Then it'd be great. You know what it needs? Food. Where's yeah. the food? Where's the fucking food, Where's guy? Where's the food, guy? It's grass. Yeah, I can't right. eat fucking grass and seaweed. I need a piece of meat. I need Italian food. It's Italian food. If the aliens came down, we're not serving them Korean barbecue. No. I like Korean barbecue. Italian food. It's very good for once yeah. every three, four months. But if I had to go four days a week, I'm getting chicken parm. Everyone knows it. Let's stop The pretending. most American food we have is an Italian food. And the most American <laughs> presidential candidate we have is Andrew Yang because he was made in china that's, that's right. what it is yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> you don't the truth to all that, that. Just look. Yeah. But, but like do you ever have people come up to you and say oh my god you're paying this rent in new york city for this you could get x in cleveland and yeah, fuck like, that yeah, guy, i know you live in coral gables that's fine you're paying yeah you know you're paying a hundred thousand dollars you got a 50 room mansion but guess what there's also a chance in an alligator an alligator to eat your baby yeah. so i don't want that I don't either want that. i don't Which, want that by the way it could happen here too yeah it could, it could happen here but you know what yeah. there's alligators just crawling around like cats down there <laughs> yeah so i don't want that either i don't want somebody who's who's on bath salts, you know, attacking my child while he's going to school. Right. So I'll stay away from Florida, and you can keep your $100,000 40-room mansion. Yeah. <laughs> I'll live in my shoebox in Bay Ridge because I live close to good Italian food. It's what it is, and the rest of the country's on fire anyway. It's all it's on fire. It's all fire and on fucking earthquakes like Los Angeles. Like, the country's on fire. What the fuck hey. are you doing in Los Angeles? The city's God, on fire, yeah. God does not want people living there. It's built on a, on false streams and a fault line. What are people doing? No, got to stay in New York City. Yeah, and but, plus... Los Angeles was built by New Yorkers. That's the second most important city. Uh, Miami was built by New Yorkers. I mean, what city? New York that Jews, Miami. New York yeah. Jews. And and what? And Los Angeles, by the way. Yeah, I mean, yeah. look, it's like nobody cares. I mean, it's like, you know, we could play pretend and make believe that people care that you, you know, you want to write a story about being from Iowa City. Fine. Yeah. Nobody fucking cares. Yeah, just fucking it's, wrestle from New York and grow or corn. Not. Grow, just wrestle and grow corn. Yeah. And we want you to wrestle because we want you in those tight clothes. Yeah, because I got, yeah, because I just pushed down the gate. That's why I got big triceps. <laughs> I'm just waiting for my dad to tie, die to fully come out of the closet. Yeah, I mean, but it's funny, though. My uh, Vegas, uh, Vegas, Miami, and L.A. are the three most fun cities besides New York. 
and they were just all built by New Yorkers. They're colonies yeah. of New York. They're they're kind of outposts of yeah. New York. Yeah, no, and um, the one thing about L.A., though, I don't like the Four Seasons. Like, I hate winter. Yeah. I hate, and I hate summer. Yeah. yeah. I just like to stay in the apartment and never move. Yeah, I hate so, summer, too. Well, if I, I lived in this apartment, I'd want to stay in here, too. Yeah, I mean, this you got a fucking comp. You got, a, you got original mirrors on the wall. I yeah. mean, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Potentially. We yeah. don't know. We, uh, don't know. we this, this is a nice place. You could tell this is like 30 years ago, maybe 60 years ago. I mean, some racist shit. But there were slaves in here. <laughs> you know that the help was not white in an apartment like this when it was first built. Well, you know, that's why a lot of old New York buildings, there's small rooms as the penthouse. They call it the penthouse, but they're like these tiny right. one bedrooms because there was no air conditioning. So those were the hottest rooms in the summer. Yeah. So that's where they did in, in New York City. And a lot of these buildings that were older put the help was in the quote unquote. Right. Now they call them the penthouses ah. and they charge extra for it. Interesting. So, yeah. That's a nice fact. Yeah. So it's a good fact. It's true in this building. Because yeah. if right. you go to the top floors, it's all like the, the worst one bedroom tiny tiny like uh, one bedroom apartments with enormous rents like the yeah. biggest rents in because they have the views yeah so Fuck which that. is all bullshit yeah. <laughs> like that's would... the thing about views like if you look at something every day for three days in a row you'll never see it again like you'll yeah. look it's invisible after that smart yeah you yeah. got yeah yeah we, you just get you kind of get spoiled and used to everything but here's what happened i think you know uh long island was created people were trying to like white people were trying to escape minorities right that's what happened so everyone went to the suburbs and then their kids realized like there's no fun out here. The minorities are where all the fun is. So every, all their kids came back into the cities and that's what gentrification really is. It's just those kids going like, I do not want to work at Panera Bread and hold, hand out a buzzer. I want to go dance with black kids because that's where the good music is. I want to hang out with Puerto Ricans. I want to hang out with Jews. That's where the good shit is happening. Well, yeah. Because Germanic people are psychopaths. I know we are. <laughs> we really are. Nice. Right? They tried to take over my country. I, I sleep with one eye open with this guy. Yes. We've shared a couple hotel rooms. One night I woke up, he was standing over my bed. That's a true story. Yeah. That is not a joke. It's a true story. Yeah. He was standing over my bed and doing this. I don't know yeah. what this means. I was working was my wrist out. And I, I, yeah, I, would, I like to smell people's feet when they sleep, too. <laughs> yes, I'm disturbed. He, he was sniffing my feet. I woke up. I saw this, this blonde hair, like big-headed thing. At the bottom of my, and I was sniffing my toes. And yeah. I said, what are you doing? He goes, I don't know. I'm disturbed. <laughs> He's disturbed. <laughs> I love, no, I love, especially like, even like you know, my daughter's half Puerto Rican. It's like, that's, I agree with you on there, hundred percent. It's like, you know, white people. I was just like, yeah, whatever. It's fine. But I want to fiesta a little bit. Yeah. You know, I just want to have a good time. As soon as I saw my kid's mom, she was gorgeous. She was dancing around. She had like a tattoo in her tit. I was like, this is for me. Yeah. I love this. I mean, and they got, they're good cerebral people. But let's be honest. We're all a little different and they have no culture. They have White no we're food. Talking about. Yeah. We're talking about Germanic, <laughs> Germanic Northern people. European. Okay. Yeah. They got no food, no culture, no music. We went to Germany together to do sh to uh, to hang out. We're doing shows there, by the way. It's gonna be fun. Yeah. But I mean, we went to like one of the premier German restaurants in Germany. It was hot dogs. It was yeah. a hot dog. Yeah. We put a hot dog with sauerkraut and, and, and applesauce, and that was German cuisine. I said this. I could have got this at Shea Stadium. This yeah. is ridiculous. Yeah. No, but we kind of we kind of dumb it down. I feel like they have like. 27 types of sausage and this and that and it's like which part of the cow and how you're mixing it with the i don't even know how they make it but here we just have this dumbed down like plastic wrapped hot dog yeah. to make it kosher or whatever yeah. <laughs> so and then even hamburgers too did you have any hamburgers there are, are they better there than no, here i don't know horrible. yeah it was I just mean, like just none like, of the food was really that good yeah, yeah. They, just, yeah. they drink beer instead of eat like, the best they, food yeah. we had in germany was italian food we yeah, went that to that was, italian restaurant and yeah. we watched and we watched the guy get drunk and punch a woman in the face yeah. right outside our window and then the guy got his ass kicked by some german security guard it was pretty cool and i was just i had fettuccine hanging out of my mouth <laughs> <That's> what it was <laughs> uh, i was like it. i should help somebody but i was like god this pasta is good you thought you were watching tv but it was just like the drapes were open yeah it's a true statement to say that the best meal we had in Bavaria was the worst Italian meal we've ever had in our life. Yeah. Uh, uh, it was yeah. the best meal we had in Germany. Yeah, it was yeah. really good food. But remember, it was only tasted good because at that time, that girl from here had texted me her tits. So we looked at her tits and we were like, oh, this pretzel tastes yes. better now. <laughs> we were just looking at yeah. boobs. You need that to help oh, you. Do we have to cut that part out for your wife? We just took a I don't think she listens to James Altucher's podcast. She does. You'd be well, surprised yeah, you'd how be... many people on their commute to work. Well, she better start. She made a dumb decision by buying that house. <laughs> You're going to get a death threat from my wife. Be oh, like, yeah. don't ever tell my husband that buying a house was a bad fucking idea. Yeah. She's like, it's my fucking dream. I'm from Long Island. No, she's that... from Long Island, which, by the way, obviously means that, you know, she's had a nose job. She's yeah, that. it's just what it is. That's what happens when you're from. Yeah, when you're from Long Island, there's three. You're, when, it, when a dad 
knows that his his kid is going to be a girl. He just chalks it up. He's like, I'm going to have to pay for a sweet 16. Yeah. I'm going to have to pay for a bat mitzvah, even if she's not Jewish. And I'm going to have to pay for a nose job. <laughs> yeah. That's just if Long Island. Long Island white girl, these three things are true. You've yeah. had a nose job. Your dad has money. And you're voting for Trump. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> You're voting to the right. Well, 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 secretly telling everyone, oh, no, Hillary, yeah, you know. Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the same shit. I mean, we were even last night when we were performing at the Jane Hotel show. It's like all these rich people. And I was like talking about Trump a little bit. And they're getting like all tight. If it's like, I know you're fucking all voting for him anyway in secret, you fucking liars. Yeah. I know what's going on here. No, it, it's funny because I actually was was doing something at the Broadway Comedy Club two days ago. And I did a, a Trump thing. And. I was surprised how many people from the back were clapping and laughing and, and yeah. this whole thing. And then I found out later they were all they all worked for like a major hedge fund manager. There was like sure. 20 people in the audience. It was their night out and they all worked for like this big hedge fund manager. Yeah. So I was thinking like this is odd that they would get that kind of response. Right. Yeah. And uh, uh, but yeah, I think there's a, I, I, you know, who do you think is going to win in 2020? Oh, God, I mean, I think it's going to be a landslide for Donnie T. Because it's not really about the issues anymore. Now it's about personality. Yep. Yeah. He's like, kind of broken that seal. He's like, it's almost like Ric Flair is president. Watching. Like after everything he says, he could go, woo! Yeah. And like people would go, yeah. Dude, watching the, when I was watching um a DNC thing, like this was maybe three, four months ago, Andrew Yang was on and they asked Andrew Yang, um, one of these debates, they asked Andrew Yang about what he would do if he was president. And he, you know, whether he could pass it along or not, he was like, I think we should start moving inland because of this climate change. I think we should start giving people a national salary because there's no jobs left. And all these concise, you know, he was saying something presidential and he was like, I'm trying, you know, this is my plan. You could hear a pin drop. I mean, all those thousand people, nope, nothing. Then I, I think it was Gillibrand, who I know is out now, but I think they were like, in your rebuttal, Senator Gillibrand, whatever. And she's like, first thing I get to the White House, if I get to the White House, I'm going to Clorox the Oval Office because Trump's disgusting. <laughs> Place went nuts. Yeah. I was like, you know what? You just games. lost me now. Yeah, it's like uh, watching, now I'm out. It's like yeah. watching you know? an episode of Nick Cannon's Wildin' Out now. It's yeah. like, yeah. who can dis who the mo That's why it's going to be like him. And the only chance on the left, I think, is um, it's got to be, um, what's her name? Uh, uh, Buttigieg? No. Uh, the, is that the, the girl, girl who running? hates Amazon. I'm just blanking <laughs> oh, on her name. Kyla Ocasio-Cortez? Kyla Ocasio-Cortez. Yeah, got, she's a monster. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she's got the personality. She's got the flair. She can, you know. She's got the gusto. She, she leans into it. If they say, yeah. oh, we caught you dancing, she'll just start dancing for the camera. She'll start right. dancing. Just yeah. like Trump. So he'll lean into it. Right. Like if they say, you know, you know, he, he, Scott Adams, the guy who created Dilbert, he wrote an article back in, I think it was April 2015, that Trump was definitely going to win. And he based it on one thing. When Megyn Kelly asked him, is it true, you know, you call all women like fat and slobs and this? And he was like, only Rosie O'Donnell. He, <laughs> he, 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 he wrote the article. Scott Adams wrote the article the next day. Trump's the next president. And he was yeah. right. It was like, yeah. then now he's famous for calling Trump like a year and a half in advance. Yeah. And what was, what was his reasoning? He just thought like he was unapologetic and that's what was, con that was what. He, he thought his way, it was his way of like. He, he he kind of started noticing then that Trump was using all these techniques common in hypnosis, and then he thought Trump was like the best hi hypnotist he had ever seen. Interesting. So he thought that Trump is like trained in like mass hypnosis. This is you know he, you know Scott's been doing Dilbert for thirty years. He's the most syndicated cartoonist ever, yeah. but uh, he's also been trained in hypnotism. He's like, oh, I started noticing everything Trump does is like these pattern disrupts to kind of change the language of right. how we elect people. Right. So that's why he started saying. Um, lion Jeb with an apostrophe. Like no one's ever used that phrase in politics before. So he started calling everybody names that were visual and had never been used in politics yeah, Pocahontas. before. Yeah, Pocahontas. So you'd start like remembering. That's the only thing you would remember. He would basically train our brains to remember only these one Jesus. things. Who do you think is going to win, James? I think Trump because who, as Guy Adams also said, I hate to be quoting him on every single thing, but who, it's not like Trump versus any Democrat. It's Trump versus a human. So who's going to win? Like, Biden can't actually say a word out loud or he's like, you know, he's like one step away from going too far into a woman's hair. Right. Bernie, <laughs> Bernie Sanders. We don't know if he's dead or alive right now. Yeah. Uh, Elizabeth yeah. Warren, she did legitimately raise money for Harvard because she was a quote unquote person of color and she's yeah. the whitest person on the planet. Yeah. Uh, who else? I know. A Andrew Yang is just scaring everyone with automation. So and, and by the way, here's my problem with Andrew Yang. If he's going to rule the world, you have, and he's constantly complaining. They never call on me at, on the debates. 
just raise your hand. Interrupt yeah. the other people like everyone else does. You can't rule the world if you can't interrupt Bernie Sanders. Right. And so who else is there? Right. I know. And I, I feel too, like even, you know, like last time in 2016, you know, because like New York, obviously, and you know, New York, LA, they're like little islands off the coast of real America. I had just, I was performing in um in Indianapolis two weeks before and I had done like some like Trump joke. I forgot what it was, but I remember people were like pissed. Like it not only did it bomb, people were walking out and they were like really fucking, you know, love Trump. And then if you said anything about Hillary, you know, people be like, yeah, they kind of would be like, yeah, that's fine. So like when I when I went back to New York, I was like, I got a good feeling he's going to win. But then when you, you know, sit around with the comedians, they're like, there's no chance he's going to win. How could he win? Because you're just really feeling New York City. But the middle of the country, which is the only one that counts, was like, no, 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 we, this, is, this guy's talking to us. So I get it. And I just feel like nothing's changed. I feel like it's even gotten worse. Like I know certain members of my family who are very, who are more liberal, or I would say on the fence, when that Joe Biden stuff happened with the with the one of the women in my family, she was like, why is like, so what? He fucking touched a woman. It's not like he raped anyone. She's like, I'm sick and tired of everyone being deemed a rapist because they flirt a little bit. She was like, fuck, fuck them. Fuck the Democrats. And I'm sure she's going to vote for Trump now. So it's like, you know, it, it sometimes this shit backfires when you try to like, you know, make everyone like this bad person for doing like kind of normal things, you know? Yeah, well, look at... Uh Al Franken, uh, you know, sure. was, was, you know, now they, the reason Kristen Gillibrand's out of the race is because she was leading the, 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 the charge that Al Franken should resign from the Senate. Now they all regret it because he was probably the only honest, yeah. decent guy there. And I don't, I'm still not even sure what he did. Like Some he did something in a USO like tour pretending to yeah. Yeah, in an entertainment show. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So I mean, like everybody saw the picture. Didn't even care. Yeah. Right. Like like in everybody, the entire world, it was it was a U.S. O. tour, like yeah. for America, like yeah. where, he, where he volunteered to like perform in Nobody Iraq. Cares about that. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah I I think, think, he was a Me Too casualty. Yeah. I think because of the because of the um, internet now too, like people like things are happening. Like you know, I just saw the other day that you know, like Andrew Yang's wife came out and said that she was like molested by a gynecologist, and that's all sad and horrible. But like, you know that it's putting, they're putting it out now for political reasons, and people see through it now. People that, I saw on when they when he put it out, all the comments were like, this is political bullshit. It, but they were saying the same thing, like, sorry for your wife, but like, this is gonna make me vote for you guy. So it's like, it's all been like, everything is for show now. So now it's like, there's no values at all anymore. So then that leads me to believe, well, then Trump will win again. Yeah, and so the question is, what's, What's not political? What's not a scam? Like, so well, we've discussed home, or, home ownership's a scam. College is a scam. Most jobs are scams. All <laughs> politics are scams. <laughs> yeah. All wars were marketing campaigns just so we could send 18-year-olds to kill people. Yeah. Like, like, if you think of it, for 18-year-olds, the two choices are kill people overseas because we don't want less people there and more people here, and or get into debt to the U.S. government. Like, yeah. so the U.S. The government can make some money. The only thing not a scam, because I know my mother's a fan of this podcast, is the Catholic Church. <laughs> the Catholic Church is pure, Mom, and I love you, and I'll see you at church on Sunday. Well, I think ultimately, <laughs> ultimately, uh, it's not all one thing or the other. And, that, and that's that's kind of the thing that I think that's really been lost in our education system, and I think that's ultimately why we're going to fail as an empire, is because... The reason why we're propping up these idiots now and we need to be entertained by cats farting and whatnot is because it's our, our education system has collapsed. I mean, it's like it's just shit. And um, uh, the liberal arts brand, which is the only part I know because I'm no scientist or anything. Because you're a cuck. Has just become act. <laughs> everything's become activist. It's like because everyone ha is trying to be a star. Right. Because that's what this country became about, some sort of becoming famous. So it's like everyone is interjecting themselves in whatever they're saying. And so it's no longer about what actually happened. It's more about like me telling you what happened. Right. Teachers are doing it. Everyone's doing it. So it's not everything is a scam. There's parts of everything that's a scam, but a lot of this stuff is necessary. Banks, all this stuff. You know, it has very many positive things. Wars, a lot of good things happen from wars. Yeah. You know, um, I'm kidding. But, you know, well, it does, you know like population control. What are you going to do? Seems like there's way more followers, too, now than leaders. I feel like everybody's just like they're not doing the research at all. Like you'll you know, you'll see somebody, you know, on Twitter. I saw this guy talking about vaccines and if you get your kids vaccinated you're crazy and he's just tweeting out these articles that somebody else wrote and then i look at his bio and he works for fedex it's like what are you doing buddy yeah, yeah deliver the, the packages well well we had um rfk jr on the podcast and we still don't know oh, you've really dropped down for us <laughs> jesus christ no, but jesus here's the thing. Christ. we don't coming up next after rfk jr chris de steph de, de stefano <laughs> the history no, high Giannis Pupis. no but here's the thing i was really wondering beforehand what was going to happen if he goes on a 
15 minute rant about vaccines because he's really anti-vaccine yeah. and you can't argue with somebody because sure. they've got no matter what you say there's like 17 arguments that they've spent 20 years studying which you can't it, even if it doesn't make sense even if you know what the truth is they have some agenda or or they're crazy or whatever so we don't even know what we're going to do with this podcast because he went on this 15 minute rant that was just when i fact check it later everything he says is wrong it's just insane that people that it's so clear that diseases are eradicated after the vaccines sure. are introduced and and he was like, no, no, they're not tested by the FDA, which is not true. And he's going on and on and on. But again, he has a whole foundation. He gets popular. He gets, yeah. you know, married to famous actresses because of this. And, and uh, you know, who it's knows what his agenda is. a group of followers. Yeah, I mean, it's like my dad has an eighth grade education. Like he was in and out of jail. Like he's an eighth grade, truly like not, you know, street smart guy, but not academically smart at all. And when Twitter started to get big or come out in 2009, 2010, because I remember I would just start a comedy where we were sitting in Staten Island. And he was like, you see this Twitter bullshit that's going around? I said, I said, yeah. He goes, do you have one? I said, no, not yet, but I'll probably get one. He goes, yeah. He goes, this is going to be a big problem for our country. I was like, why? He goes, because not everyone's supposed to have a voice. He was like, the worst thing you could do in this country is let everybody talk. Yeah. And I was like, this, he's not wrong. No, you know? totally right. And yeah. since we're all, we're, we're all living in a period of extended youth now, like, you know. Uh, everyone w doesn't want to grow up or like sacrifice to do anything like that. So now the way we still, we kind of like consume things and, and, and espouse things as kids. It's like very childish views of things where you just go like the Korean war was bad yeah. or, you know, Vietnam was bad. It's like, well, there's a lot of, you know, it, it's not two plus two equals four. It's like the Korean war. Was it bad? I mean, like, why don't you go ask people in South Korea if it was bad? Yeah, right. Because they'll tell you it was great that we yeah. held that line. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's all perspective. It's like, uh, yeah, cancel Christopher Columbus. Yeah. Okay, then then we don't have a country. Yeah, he, he's like, the one that you know. It's, it's, it's like, what it's do like, you want me to do? What we did to Japan was bad. It's like, yeah, that was bad. Yeah, but you know what Japan did to China? Yeah, you ever was the really bad. King? Yeah, I what, mean it was you know? really, really. It gets overshadowed, but it yeah. was like it was, They did a lot of boo boo. It's like, oh there. yeah, why did you drop a nuclear bomb on Japan? That's wrong. But you know, Japan was bayonetting babies and spit roasting them, fire roasting them in front of their Chinese parents. So yeah. is that okay? They did a couple boo boos. Yeah, they yeah. left a couple boo boos yeah. in China. So it's like that's why I don't eat sushi. Yeah, they're still the enemy <laughs> to me. So no, I was going to question on Italian food. No disrespect food. to the guy over there, even though uh, I know you're not Japanese. I was going to question on Italian food. I put up sushi with Italian food, but okay, I see where you're coming from sushi. now. Yeah. I love sushi. No, I like sushi, too. I I, yeah. Sushi's number two for me. I go I go Italian first, then sushi. sushi. sushi well, because you're fucking, you're an enemy. Yeah, but, yeah. but, 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 but look, but look, if you're going keto, Italian food's hard. Like, you got to have pasta. Hard, right? Pizza's hard. I know. So, I, that's why I just rather have jiggly tits than eat Italian food. <laughs> 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 yeah yeah but so but this is what we talk about and this yeah. is what we love talking to guys like you about because it's like you you know because you talk to some of the younger people and they they're like rfk jr we're like you can talk to them and they just don't care their professor told them something and that's what they're going to go on where it's like but there's so much more to the, these conversations you well, know yeah, it's like if you're a professor and some kid it's like you're in a history class and some kid goes like you know, it's like fucking white people are racist. The, the professor can't go, well, there's more to, you know, you can't just, because then they're going, you're racist. And you're going, okay, hey, here's an A. Here's, yeah. I don't want any trouble. Here's a fucking A. You're right. Uh, you know, 100% of European people killed 100% of Native Americans. They've enslaved 100% yeah, of the Africans. Fox didn't have anything to do Africans with Africans never did anything wrong. Asians never did anything wrong. It's only white people who have some evil gene. You're right. And they're like, thank you. Give me my A. And now I'm going to move to San Francisco and fucking tweet at people. Yeah, now I'm going to go do fucking open yeah. mics at the comedy yeah. store. It's this fucking fantasy of activism that has become the world. I mean, even and comedy. It's, it's enabled digitally. Now like, it's like he said, everyone has this voice and they just fucking masturbate to each other. And sorry, I did the motion for that was for the people who were watching. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. Was for it's you. a circle. We only had three video views and a couple hundred thousand audio views, so it's okay. Yeah, All right, good. <laughs> but it's like even these comedy specials, you yeah. know, like the extremely liberal ones, like they're not funny. They're TED talks. Yeah. It's like I watch some of these specials to put my daughter to sleep. Yeah. It's like this is brutal. This <laughs> bullshit. And the guy, and it's like, what do you? And it's like I know comedy is subjective. But it's like not that subjective. Not that subjective. Well, I, mean, I, I can tell you this isn't funny. Yeah. But like, For, how many Netflix specials? Ugh, I hate to trash Netflix, but here we go. Yeah. How many Netflix specials have you actually watched? No, like, not not, not I watched, many. I watched yeah. in the past. I watched year, Chappelle. I, yeah, I watched Chappelle, and I just watched Ronnie Chang's, uh, and yeah. uh, I don't know of any others that I watched. I watched Michelle Wolf's too. I like because but yeah, she's yeah. a friend of mine. You know, uh, I watched her show until Netflix canceled it. Yeah. Um. But you know, speaking of you, you mentioned climate change. My, my kids are obsessed with climate change, but they focus on they, they take that focus and then focus on 
well, dad, no more plastic straws. We got to get metal straws. Right. And I'm I, you know how disgusting metal straws are? Yeah. And like, you have to disinfect the inside and, and to make a metal straw is like 10,000 plastic straws. But January 3rd, when Iran was in the news, they, they, they didn't care about climate change at all. They just wanted to know if they were going to be drafted. Right. So yeah. it's like people don't actually care yeah. unless they they're care. arguing. Ask a 20, a 19 year old kid in Syria if they'll use a plastic. They'll, right. they'll fucking use whatever. Take They just want food, right. man, because right. they're getting chemical gas attack. They right. don't care about what bathroom goes for the gender. They're like, these are these are pro these are first world problems. You know, and, we and don't plastic straws is the least of the problem with climate change. Right. It's like we got to get off fucking gas. Yeah. Well, or and then, you know, everybody's. First off, nobody complains about China because China's double the pollution or whatever of us. But 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 then like someone asked me in this Q and I gave a talk and then someone asked me in a Q and A, why do you never talk about climate change on your podcast unless you're talking to the history hyenas now? Yeah, he is. said, "What?" Well, and and I had to think about it because I and I answered, I actually don't give a shit because there's only so many things you can care about. Like I care about my kids, I care about my family, I care about my yeah. friends and podcast and 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 my own work. You can't care about every issue particularly if you're not you know it's impossible yeah. right and and also i and also everyone says well 97 percent of scientists agree well that doesn't mean anything 97 percent of scientists in 1800 didn't think you should wash your hands before delivering babies so <laughs> yeah you know well, what do you right. you don't know no one knows the science and okay maybe we're getting warmer maybe we're not there's i've seen arguments on both sides uh, I don't know anything about it. I'm not researching it. I actually don't give a shit about and I it. I think you hit. I think you hit it on the head. I talk about this a lot in my stand up, where I'm like, now that I'm a father and I've, you know, I have a four year old daughter, it's like my world's gotten so much smaller. My child is my priority, so I care about certain issues, but really not all of them. But now that people, I think it's a direct correlation. People delaying having children because now they'll say, you know, 40s a new 30, 50s a new 40. Like our parents, my mother had me; she was 20 years old, and that was normal. And I'm sure our parents had us when we were extremely young. Where now it's now I had my daughter at 30 and people were telling me, oh, you're too young to be a dad. So it's like, what is that happening? We're growing up. We're learning all this information. And we have no, you know, we're sitting around with our roommates, you know, at a, in our 30s and 40s, just trying to fix the world where it's like, when you have a child, it's like, I'm aware now. Like, I see it. I'm like, yeah, plastic straws versus paper straws. The paper straws don't work. So <laughs> my daughter, she needs to get the liquid into her mouth. So the paper straws are not going to cut it for me. I just give her a plastic straw. I don't care because the priority is to get the kids nutrition into her fucking face. But I get it. If you're some guy that's 60 years old and have roommates, you know, you're going to be like, yeah, if you use plastic straws, you're an ISIS. Of course. <laughs> You're not a functioning you I don't even count those people as society members. I'm like, whatever you say, I couldn't care less because I got real problems. I don't have hey. the fucking energy to get to the protest because I have a four year old daughter that I'm dealing with every night. You don't have any of these problems. You can be up till three o'clock in the morning and make believe you're a fucking poet when you work at Starbucks. I don't give a fuck. Also, think about it like when you have a kid, that's when I first started to feel real fear. Like, yeah. how am I gonna pay? For this kid, yeah. like, how am I going to make money? How am I going to survive and and do well? And and then every time I would, you know, I had ups and downs. Every time I would go down, I was thinking, oh my god, I can, these kids are going to die now because I can't afford them. I, you don't have time even to think no. about yeah. these issues. Like, you just want to make sure they're okay. And and even then, you can't make them too okay, or they get spoiled or whatever. Sure. It's, it's it's hard. And uh, I'm I'm not gonna, you know, I get food delivered to me so I could sit on this couch and binge watch whatever. Right. I'm not going to solve climate change. I cannot do it. Well, yeah. yeah. I, I believe that. I, I believe, I don't know. I'm not a climate scientist. So I just believe like if there's a consensus out there and that's what scientists are saying, it's like, yeah, I believe it. But it's like, yeah, stop yelling at us about it. What are we going to do? What, right. what am I going to do about right. it? Right. So like, figure like, it out. Right. I'm not even saying yeah. it doesn't exist. Like maybe it does. Maybe Make it doesn't. For it. I don't know. Yeah. You know what I mean? Put, yeah. it, put it in a, I don't know what you do. I don't know what fucking voodoo you guys do that made like polio vaccines and, and technology, but fucking do it. Yeah. Figure it out. Stop yelling at us. It's like, yeah. you know, just let the market figure out a better, better straw because the paper straws, they don't work. So make a straw out of like, I don't know, fucking cat urine or something. <laughs> but yeah. it's like, do something else. Yeah. But they're, yeah, they're just yelling at us. And then the other side, those people annoy me who are going like, these scientists are, are, are shills. You know, they're going like, it's like, who are you? Like, you know, I work at fucking Home Depot. It's like, you don't know either. So it's like, if the people are researching this, I'm going to put my money on the people who, who research this. Because if you look back in history, it's never really the scientists that are trying to like, you know, pull one up on us. It's usually an industry that has an interest in prolonging whatever it is that they're discovering. 
So it's like I'll put my I'll, I don't know because I'm a fucking idiot, but I'm gonna I'm gonna bet on right. the the scientists are saying what the scientists are saying has more truth to it than you know what what um Gary Sixer Niner from Michigan Wisconsin tweeted at me you know they're yeah. like oh you believe these scientists are doing it for the funding it's like all right I, I guess you know yeah sure but you know I I was looking at this book. I don't know why I was. Someone gave me this this book to look at. It's written in 2007, so kind of a little bit before all the social media really took off. And it was a book about how to be a sports referee. And <laughs> this guy was saying, "Oh, yeah." So Steve, Steve, I outsource all my sports conversations to Steve. Yeah, but uh, this James the Altucher one. fucks. You know that <laughs> if he's reading books about sports referees, that guy has sex every fucking night, and you know that. You know that about James Altucher. <laughs> <laughs> could be true i don't know uh, i'm knocked out every night by my wife so who knows um but uh this guy was saying about being being a good sports referee even from a legal point of view do not argue with spectators and i thought this was a fascinating point for now because we're all everybody on twitter is like a spectator to your point like okay let the scientists talk about it and, or industries figure it out but then everybody all the spectators are arguing and he said Whatever you do, the, the, the whole page is, if you take one thing from this book and he puts it all in caps, do not argue with spectators. And he's just talking about football games. And he says, watch a referee who makes a controversial call when all the fans are screaming at him. It's as if he's deaf, as if he doesn't hear at all. But he could have, he could be totally talking about 2020 Twitter or sure. Facebook. Like everybody's a spectator on climate change, Iran. Suddenly on my Facebook feed, everybody was an Iranian general on uh, on January yeah. 4th. Like yes. you didn't know anything. I didn't even know who Soleimani was on January 2nd. Yeah. But yeah. Everybody was like, yeah. oh. Everyone was like Trump. What Trump did is bad. You're like, you don't even know what you're talking about. You just hate Trump so much for your own identity that you're just, whatever the guy does, you're going like, it's got to be bad. You're like, who knows? You don't know. Yeah, you we just don't no know. Idea. Yeah, you're not privy to this information at yeah, all. I feel the no same idea. exact way as you. And I've, I, you're like one of the first, obviously, besides Giannis, that it's like publicly I can talk to. And I'm like, yeah, I fucking agree with you. Where I'm like, these people don't know what they're all followers. Yeah. They're just following what they think this identity politics is supposed to follow. And it's like, it's so bullshit to me. Yeah, because I went and read like some other feeds from like some experts who are like, you know, on the ground, like muckraking journalists who are in the Arab world. And they did these amazing threads on why he was such a dangerous guy. And I was going like, that's totally opposite from what I'm hearing in the mainstream media over here. Yeah. That's kind of anti-Trump. And so I'm going like, you guys don't know. You guys are hearing 10th, 20th yeah. hand on who this guy was. And these people are telling you, hey, this is who he was, blah, blah. And I'm going like, this is a lot more believable. Uh, at the end of the day, like everyone's got their spin on it. And you just have to use your own critical thinking and common sense street smarts to figure out which one of these things has more truth? Nobody has it anymore because it's too safe of a world. Right. It's or, too safe of a world. Or Nobody not think can about think it at all. Yeah. Like, or why I do, don't? Yeah, why, yeah. why? If I'm not going to Iran to fight a battle and if there's no nuclear weapons happening here, I really don't have to think about it. Yeah, like, right. I'm not going to change anything. But then how would you look cool to your friends, though? You're right. Yeah. Well, then I, I have very few friends. Like, yeah. they all, you know, they're yeah. all right in this room. So. <laughs> but that's why people do it, I think, is because they want to look good to that group. They want it's a virtue signal. Sure, they want to be like, signal. you know, I am I would never, ever approve of anything Trump did because he's a monster. Right. And he was a monster the first day in office. And Hillary was the white, the white knight, white knight in a white fucking business suit. Yeah, with hot sauce. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> was she really that that just shows you how bullshit this world is. It's like, all right, Trump said some horrible things. Unbelievable entertaining guy. He said some horrible things, meaning like some sexist things or whatever. Yeah. Maybe he even, let's just say he even was like a little overly aggressive with a woman. Very bad. Very bad. But Obama, who I thought was a good president overall, net, uh, fucking leveled countries yeah. and killed people. Yeah. Hillary, fucking Syria, it's all her fucking fault. She's killing everybody. Yeah. She's fucking killing people. I know. And it's like, she's great, but he's bad because he said some weird or bad stuff. What's well, the entertainment world? I mean, wh what are your priorities? Yeah. Well, mean, because the media that- How much does it mean to you to be in a gang that you just don't have any thinking skills anymore? You know? Right. Well, because the media, I mean, it's controlled, right? It's a liberal media that mostly controls it all now. Yeah, he's looking at you going, I know what you're getting at. I know what you're getting <laughs> so at. So it's like, yeah, no, but here it's it like, comes with the German face. The but Jews just, control the media. They control it's your people. <laughs> yeah. So it's On just, both sides, though. Yeah. The Jews are everywhere. I so. know. They're everywhere. And that's got to stop. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah. You no. guys get it so bad. I mean, I, it's nobody I feel worse than the Jews. No matter yeah. what happens in the world, somehow the finger just fucking finds its way like fucking the magic bullet 
that killed JFK just kind of go. You could be like in Chinatown beating the Chinese person and going, I did it. I did it. They go, no, he did it because he's a Jew. Yeah. I it's, mean, it's true. It's Look true. at New York City right now. It's like every single day there's some yeah. some like violent attack. No one's. I know. I so mean, you know what it is? You guys don't proselytize. So it's like I realize that. We people, don't want anybody. Yeah, and people hate you for the same reason I hate the seller because they won't book me. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's like they always blame Jews because Jews don't want you, and you always hate the thing that you don't want because it's narcissistic projection. You know what I mean? Right. I get and it's it. like, and you know what's funny? He's like these like, Tim Dillon. This is to steal another Tim Dillon thing. He We're goes, just gonna keep stealing Tim. Yeah, Dillon he goes. Exactly. Like, this is like a, a pseudo episode with he's just fucking, Tim Dillon ranting. Yeah, he goes. These <laughs> yeah. neo Nazis are so fucking stupid. They don't even know. You know, they're they're angry at the wrong people. He's like. The Chinese control you. Yeah. That's who it is. And it's true. It's like you're going, the Jews are replacing us. No. No. Chinese. No, one of my one of my friends was trying to sell his apartment, a nice, beautiful apartment, and he can't get the money. He can't get the deal he wants. And he said his realtor told him, like not sugarcoat, he told him word for it. He said, you can't get the price you want because there's not enough Chinese money in this building. There needs to be more Chinese money that comes in here where they're buying things for the higher price and oh, then you can get what you totally want. Totally true. To Chinese money, yeah. if it's not in the building, you can't sell. Particularly in New York City, particularly in Manhattan, it's all, that's the whole thing holding up real estate prices right now, according to every real estate agent. So Yeah, the yeah. Chinese money. Yeah. What can you do? Kind of, yeah, they're, they're holding up the whole like market. Like it's like uh, a, a lot of those buildings are just vacant. Because right? it's like, a way, it's a way for people to escape their money, to get yeah. their money out of here. And then eventually they can get out as well and then send their kids to Georgetown or Harvard or whatever. And but they also, have to have a place to live is here. It's also a way to, to hide their money from yeah, taxes. Yeah. So hide they, their money from the Chinese. And right. uh, if they're ever persecuted, and there's always government shifting around who's sure. in favor, who's not. So, uh, uh, yeah. That, that's like, <laughs> that's the is. huge flaw of socialism that nobody just wants to admit, like as adults. It's like, I, I socialism, I think, is a very necessary, uh, you know, um, check on capitalism. You know, I think it, 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 you got to balance things out. But like it, it, these socialists that are just going like, you know, they, they're just utopian. It's like this is this, this is not a new story. And it's like you do know what the nature of a human is. Right. It's like we are selfish. It's just what it is. And nobody wants to pay taxes. Even the most liberal people, when they go into their accountant's office, what are we all trying to do? Figure out a way uh, to tax IRS, evade. I know we have a payment plan. Don't worry. I'm going to get to it. I know I'm a, a couple We're months late right now. tax evade. That's why, that's why Greece collapsed. It's like everyone wants the benefits of socialism, but nobody wants to fucking pay for it. It's like, I want my free health care, but I don't want to be taxed for it. Well, then it's like, this isn't going to work then. You got to chip in to maybe get those benefits if you get sick. Nobody wants to do that shit because we're too selfish. Let's just stop fucking, let's stop pretending. Everyone's pretending. I don't well, want to pretend anymore. <laughs> but yeah. look at look at like Brexit. That was the reason the British wanted out in the first place. No one really focused on kind of the economic the economics of what Brexit was about. And everybody said, said no, this is about fascism. This is about uh, you know immigrants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they just they didn't want to pay Greece's right. debt down. So it's like keep right. us out of that. It's not our problem. Right, so right. and yeah, okay, it would be nice if everybody could help everybody else but sometimes you can't do that they didn't want to do that and i think there was a little they wanted to kind of close that immigrant faucet they were like yeah there's a leaky fault let's just close that yeah but, yeah. but then but then you would see france getting out like all these countries are who knows the eu might fall apart yeah that's an experiment that you're kind of going like i'm surprised it's made it this long i mean and you know europe is just like you know it's tribal man Europe yeah, is we don't like even tribal. want immigrants from there. Look, Canada yeah. just announced Prince Harry can't move to Canada. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> he just, can't. No, the the, 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 the the biggest paper in Canada said it was against the law for a royal to move to Canada. That's the because it's not a monarchy and they're avoiding the British monarchy. Their their claim is is that it's unconstitutional in Canada for Prince Harry to move there. And Prince Harry, meanwhile, says he doesn't want to move to the U.S. until Trump's out. So oh where is that guy gonna go? <laughs> yeah. He's got fifty million dollars and he's a royal fam royal family. He can't he can't he's move to any go country. Right back to the fucking Buckingham Palace. Yeah, but they don't want him either. Yeah, like I kind of think that was a whole kind of weird play where it seems like Prince Harry wanted out, but they're really trying to say he wanted out. So later on, we can kick Prince Andrew out of the royal family too. So this was kind of like their excuse, like, eh, we're just going to trim things down. Yeah. Uh, Prince Harry's not in, so maybe none of the brothers of anybody are in. I think they should kick them all out and stop paying for it. I mean, yeah. what are you guys doing? Yeah. You guys are still playing dress up? I mean, you, why are taxpayers okay with... I used to do shows in Scandinavia, and I would, I would, I would probe the Scandinavians who I was friends with. I was going like, so why is this... What are you guys doing here? And that's your queen and your king? I was like, what are you guys doing here? Is, is, your, is there a princess around? And they're going like, 
And they would, they would rationalize. They would go, you know, they're good for the country. They act as ambassadors. And I'm going like, listen, guy, don't ever criticize America again for uh, going to war or anything like that. Because, you know, we're like if it wasn't for us going to war to get you your oil to do, play your little dress up game, you wouldn't be able to play this dress up game. You see, you, you're, you're, you're spending your tax dollars on this because we spend the tax dollars to do that for you. Because yeah. if you had to spend tax dollars for the military like we have to do, because it's not a perfect world, you wouldn't be able to fucking pay your king and queen three hundred thousand dollars a year to inbreed. Uh, so that's weird. Three hundred thousand, fifteen million a year. 15, like it's yeah, three hundred thousand a month. I mean, <laughs> yeah. What are they doing? And a they week. and they rationalize. Have you ever spoken to one of them? Like to, talk to about con- talk no to to one of the the, the citizens of those countries. Mm-hmm. It's like they're talk about conditioning. Like they defend it and they go like they represent our country. And they're going, guy, nobody out. And I call everyone guy, girls, everyone, everyone's we, guy. Yeah, we call all foreigners guy. So I said, yeah. listen, guy. I said nobody in any country when they think about Denmark is thinking about your royal family. Nobody even knows who they are, okay? The only people we know if they are is the British ones because they're in our tabloids once in a while. And that's just like fat housewives who have uh, short haircuts and neck fat, who have nothing to do all day, are reading about that. Nobody cares about that. They don't represent your country at all. David Beckham is more of a representative of England than whoever Prince Victoria is. Am I wrong? No. Am I crazy? That's why why it's so so funny that there's no news anymore Right. Iran sort of disappeared. Some I don't even know like what was it nuked? I have no idea what happened. It's not in the newspaper anymore. And Megxit, you know, Meghan yeah. Markle leaving England. That's the only thing in the newspaper right now. Yeah, that I, and the impeachment. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. That's yeah, the impeachment. Like, but this that's little, like this that's gonna thing. go nowhere yeah, anywhere. Either too. one of those yeah. things are fucking going anywhere or significant. That's the only significant thing. Why do I I don't care about Meghan Markle? She what was she like a C list star? She was like an actress on some yeah. TBS show. What the fuck do I care who she's getting dicked down by? Yeah. I don't give a fuck what she's doing. I don't give a fuck what he's doing. I was criticizing him on Twitter and they started going, he actually has done stuff. He was in the military. I was like, you really fucking think that that guy was doing the duty with the other fucking soldiers that they didn't pull him aside when he ran? There's that one camera scene where he runs. Yeah. You, know, you don't think that was orchestrated? Where yeah. you saw that scene, you see I that didn't one see it, but I can imagine Did explosions see that? in the background. There was a, you saw it, right? Like a thriller movie. It's, and they just yeah. kept replaying it over and yeah. over as if to convince me that Harry's going to put himself in fucking harm's yeah. fire. Get, I mean, yeah. 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 The fucking Michael Bay was yeah. there directing yeah. it. Yeah. 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 yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's the most canned footage you will ever see in your life yeah. where there's like something happens, like he's deployed, yeah. right? It's so funny. He's deployed. And then a bunch of British soldiers are running in the background. And he just goes like this and he rips off his mic and he just <laughs> runs. And by the way, he runs like this, like a fucking ballerina do about to do a run. He yeah. runs like that because the kids never had a, a moment of male physical violence in his life. Yeah. And then they cut, you know, they just fade out and they're like, you know, he's just one of the guys. Sure. You know, he's just, he's a normal sure. guy. I'm like, no, he, he's an inbred kid. <laughs> yeah. It's, you know? it's true. Yeah. True. He's like, he, he's, he's pointless. He doesn't have a job. This is like ridiculous. Well, that's what Like he says he's going to go for financial independence and he's giving up the, the his sovereign so- salary Good. as a prince. Yeah. But he's keeping, his dad has some money set aside. He's keeping that salary, which by the way, happens to be $3 million a year. Which is but, the people's <laughs> money. That's taxpayer money. Right. Yeah. But beyond that, he's going to go for financial independence. It, from his $21 million compound that he just bought in Canada. So, you know. <laughs> it's ridiculous, dude. Yeah, so nothing, that's the whole thing of like, and I think this is what comedians do so well. And I think this is why these are voices people listen to, like your podcast, Joe Rogan's others, is that you ask why, you why is this happening? What is the, the real narrative? And it's usually ridiculous it's and absurd. That yeah. is stupid. I mean, it's like feudalism was an oppressive system. It's an oppressive, bad system. It has like a pretty name on it because they were wearing hats and shit like that. But those people were tyrants and despots and dictators. And then you're keeping it. It's like it's almost like we're going like, you know, Hitler, the whole Hitler thing. He had some bad things. But let's just keep a Fuhrer, (laughs) you know, to represent the country, to represent Germany. Let's just keep a Fuhrer and he will walk around in a mustache and just do this. And it'll just be a costume show. And you can go visit and take pictures with tourists. I mean, what the fuck are you people doing? And then they criticize us when, I mean, go, f- you, you ever go to like a soccer game in Europe? Yeah, oh yeah. And then they criticize us for being They're racist. They're bananas at black there's players. A fucking, there's right. a whole neo-Nazi section uh, right. at a fucking football game. They're going like, and you're going, who's that? They're going, oh, that's the conservative party. You're going, that's the conservative party. They should all be fucking in prison. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah. They're all going like this during, and they're throwing bananas on the field. And then they're like, America, you guys are fucking animals. It's like, yeah, keep running your mouth. Keep running your fucking mouth. 
And we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna. The boys are gonna show up. And we're gonna take over your country too. It's just what it is. Yeah. Now, by the way, before this podcast, I was saying to everybody, "How am I gonna get Giannis to talk a little bit more? Like, yeah. it's really. <laughs> how, you, how am I gonna get Giannis to have half no. the people, my fan base, not like him? This I is, just did it. This is who. This is the character who I've coined Yanni Long Days, yeah. and this is what I mean. This is what I have to deal with day in and day out. When he's on these rants, a lot of them, a lot of times I'll see it on Twitter. I always cite the one. Yeah. One time I woke up, it was 2 30 in the morning. I woke up to, to pee. I saw him. He tweeted out, The wheels of history are greased in violence. And I said, Uh oh, they're greased, greased in blood. blood. Yeah. The wheels of history are greased with blood. And I said, Uh oh, Yanni Long Days. I got a call at 7 a.m. He's like, You want to get coffee, guy? I got shit to talk about. I was like, I'm in for a long day. I got a long day of this because this it's is what true. I deal with every fucking yeah. day. I try to corner him and like, I got to get stuff on mine. That's why I podcast. He'll go into do stuff like that. And I'll just be like, I'm silly. We're silly. Yeah. yeah. Before he fucks. It starts a movement. And he try, it's funny because he tries to get off the phone with me. It's real hilarious because I'll be on a rent and he'll just be, he'll be like, oh my God, my daughter's dead. And then he just gets yeah. off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's what's important. It's yeah. not it's yeah. not all the blood. It's in the plastic straws for his daughter. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. So. Well, you guys, uh, I know you're doing like a live podcast at like three o'clock today, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're doing at three. Yes. Yeah. So, well, thanks for making yeah. the time to come up here. Uh, We've been looking forward to this so much, and we great. almost feel like we're obligated because you support us. Thank you very much. Yeah, Thank no, you so much. No, no, no problem. Yeah. yeah. And uh, come back anytime. Also, and I'm going to be going on yours. I think in February, right? Yes. Wait yes. Yes. February. It's going to be great. Yeah. I, I, uh, we're going to talk history. Hell yeah. For up three minutes, and then we'll just, uh, we'll just pull rant around. The, yeah. We'll rant about the monarchy. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Yeah. It'll be part two of this, yeah. which is fun. Yeah. Excellent. All right. Well, history hyenas. Go to patreon.com slash Bay Ridge Boys. By the way, also, I want to mention, check out all your Bay Ridge Boys sketches and Ladder yes. 14. There's so much fun stuff you guys put out there. Bay Ridge Boys, that could be a TV show. That's, uh, we hope has, anyone, has anyone said to you, hey, pitch this? Uh, funny. We have and nobody cares. Yeah, nobody so cares. you know, yeah. like because the TV executives are a little late with stuff. Yeah. But hey, we're gonna keep putting them out yeah. and see what happens. We've yeah. had some feedback. Like the people love it, fans love it. But we've had feedback that like, ah, oh, we've seen that before. It's like, no, you haven't. No, you but, haven't. Yeah. No, executives it's, just don't. Yeah, want they it. haven't seen it before. It's super funny. I watch that over Succession any day. Oh, oh sorry, that, HBO. Man. I worked at HBO. <laughs> this HBO is a sponsor of this podcast. It's okay, but uh, uh, Bay Ridge Boys is great. And um, something else I uh, wanted to mention you do. But anyway, blowing the light, my good. special. Check blowing that the light. out. Check yeah. out his 9-11 story. Yes, on YouTube and uh, all my live stand up dates at ChrisDComedy.com. I'm all over. So check the schedule. GiannisPapasComedy.com. Check my dates uh, coming up. Feb when is this releasing? Uh, Jay? Probably first or second week of February. OK, so I'll be at Gotham Comedy Club uh, February 27th, 28th. And then Uncle Vinny's. Uh, no, Gotham 21st, 22nd, Uncle Vinny's in Point Pleasant, New Jersey, 27th, 28th. So New York and New Jersey. Excellent. All right. Yes. Thank you guys so much. You, you, you. promise you're going to come on again? This is yes. great. I want to do, I want to do another one right now. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. We're going to start the camera again. <laughs> yeah. Thanks a lot, you guys. Thank, Thank you. James.